It's been no secret now for a number of years that Sony has been looking to get into the ever popular demand for shared cinematic universes. And with the recent release of Venom, the first film in Sony's universe of Marvel characters is now upon us. While the critical reception towards Venom has been fairly mixed, and while I myself have several issues with the film, I do think there are some interesting elements within the movie that can definitely be salvaged and improved upon in a follow-up. In addition, we know that Sony's next entry into the shared universe is Morbius, with Jared Leto attached to play the living vampire, as well as standalone films centred around Kraven the Hunter, Black Cat and Silver Sable. With that said, even though I have been somewhat critical of Sony's attempts to launch a Spider-Man-less cinematic universe, I do think it's possible, and in this video I want to discuss how Sony could actually make the shared Marvel Universe work. And I should note before we start that although Sony still do own the film rights to Spider-Man, and therefore it is possible that they could decide to integrate Tom Holland or introduce a new actor into this world set out in Venom, I'm going to work under the assumption that this Sony Cinematic Universe will be one making use of Spider-Man's related characters and properties, but without the web slinger's presence himself. It's clear that Venom was intended to be the launching point for this new Sony-verse, so let's start there. While the film is for the most part largely self-contained, and surprisingly contained next to no references to Eddie Brock's connection with Spider-Man, the film does leave several tidbits to a larger world behind it. For instance, the film's post credit sequence teased the introduction of Carnage in a follow-up film, and director Ruben Fleischer also noted that the origin of the symbiotes is something that was cut from the theatrical cut of Venom, alluding to a more faithful adaptation of the 1995 miniseries Planet of the Symbiotes. And while I was at first hesitant over whether Venom as a character could work as a protagonist on screen, despite its flaws, Venom the movie did make me like the Eddie-Venom relationship, and with a better script, it could make for a very interesting film. By the end of the movie, Eddie is set up to be the lethal protector of San Francisco, a role he undertook in the 1993 miniseries of the same name, wherein Venom and Spider-Man come to an understanding, and Venom relocates to California to watch over the city of San Fran. And even despite the movie's shortcomings, the character of Venom is now in a position to be a viable protagonist moving forwards. While the Venom film didn't quite stick the landing, it did just enough to ensure that this would be a marketable and popular character going forwards, something Sony needed in order for their new shared universe to work. With this in mind, it does suggest that other Spider-related characters, whether it be Silk, Jackpot, Craven, or Silver Sable, may be able to be adapted onto the big screen without a connection to the wall crawler. Sure, it won't be the same as in the comics, and some could argue therefore that it won't be as good, but it stands to reason that it can work, as long as a suitable story is put in place to flesh out and build these characters up in the absence of Spider-Man. While properties such as the Sinister Six genuinely do require Spider-Man's presence in order to function, at least in order to reflect their comic book iterations, smaller, more isolated movies featuring these singular characters who exist on the fringes of Spider-Man's world could be a real possibility. In addition to this, we know that Sony's next entry into the series will be an adaptation of Morbius the Living Vampire, starring Suicide Squad and Dallas Buyers Club's Jared Leto, honka, honka. and directed by Swedish filmmaker Daniel Espinosa. Morbius was created in 1971 by writer Roy Thomas as an antagonist in Amazing Spider-Man issue 101, and the character, much like Venom, started out as a villain for Spider-Man before becoming somewhat of a standalone anti-hero, receiving his own solo title in 1992. The character, whose real name is Michael Morbius, is an award-winning biochemist who becomes imbued with vampiric superhuman abilities after a failed experiment intended to cure a rare blood disorder, taking on both the powers and features of a vampire, with the character struggling with his humanity and morality in contrast to his insatiable lust for human blood. But unlike Venom, Morbius' character isn't intrinsically linked to Spider-Man in any significant way. Whereas Venom was initially born as an offshoot of the Web Slinger, Morbius is very much his own character, one who just happens to come into conflict with Spider-Man. 
meaning that it would arguably be easier for Sony to develop a story to showcase this character without changing too much to account for Spider-Man's absence than Venom had to, and in turn making it a fairly logical choice for a standalone film. Other characters who could work in this vein include Nightwatch, a villain turned vigilante who travels back in time to ensure his younger self would become a hero, with Spike Lee rumoured to be circling the property, and Wraith, a title held by numerous Spider-Man related characters, most recently Yori Watanabe, who, after growing frustrated with the NYPD's inability to take down Mr. Negative, takes on the vigilante persona. You could even make a case for more popular characters, for example Silk, or even Spider-Man 2099, who, more so like Venom, do exist with notable ties to Spider-Man, but could still be altered to somewhat work without the direct relations to Peter Parker. Again, while the characters won't be the same as they were in the comics, they could be changed just enough to stand on their own. And whether that's a positive or a negative thing is entirely up to you. I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that probably the best course of action for Sony to take isn't necessarily to throw together a connected shared universe out of the remaining Spider-Man related properties at their disposal, but instead to cherry pick the ones that are able to stand alone as solo characters without the need to directly link back to Spider-Man. And by doing this, it'll appear less like a Spider-Man shared universe with a Peter Parker shaped hole at its core, and more like a series of movies starring somewhat overlooked and underutilised Marvel characters. Likewise, we've seen the dangers of jumping too fast into the shared universe game without a clear long-term strategy, both Universal's Dark Universe and DC shared film series have suffered from a lack of vision in their early stages, with DC now attempting to de-emphasise the interconnectivity of their franchises in order to ensure that films such as Shazam and Joker fare better than Suicide Squad and Justice League did. Even looking more insular, Sony essentially made this exact mistake in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, by trying to forcefully cram in as many world-building elements as possible in order to set up a variety of movies that ultimately never came to fruition. If Sony chooses to treat these new films as singular motion pictures adapting various characters each with a tenuous connection to Spider-Man in one form or another, but still remain first and foremost their own property, then the only thing stopping them from succeeding is Sony themselves. And while I can't honestly say that I have the greatest confidence in them to do so considering their track record, the notion of adapting characters from the Spider-Man world into solo films is definitely doable, just as long as they do it right. Hey everyone, thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to leave a like on the video and also leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about the video. Do you think Sony's cinematic shared universe could actually work? What films do you think would be a good choice to make? Or do you think they should just scrap it, leave Spider-Man with Marvel and stop getting their grubby hands on everything? I can't wait to hear what you have to say. As always, if you want some more videos, you can subscribe to the channel and watch new weekly videos like the one you're watching right now. There'll be some recommendations on the screen for other videos you might enjoy. Or if you want some written versions of videos and other articles, you can find them at my website, owenlexcomics.com. If you want a little bit more of me and what I have to say, you can follow me on Twitter, just at owenlexcomics, where right now I'm probably still gushing about season three of Daredevil, so look forward to that. And that's all for me. I will see you next time. So until then... Take care and keep reading.